Okay, hey guys, um, I bought this new book called The Prefab 4, and I think it'd be really cool if we read it together, just to try it out. Yeah, sure. You could be Lindsay, you could be Kimberly, All right. you could be Emily, Emily, and I guess I'll be Dee Dee. Emily gets to be Emily? <laughs> yes, <laughs> what a coincidence. Okay, uh, who starts? I'll start. Okay. Standing nearly six feet tall with a little help from her four-inch espadrilles. Lindsay recently ended a self-induced spell-checking phase. Unsatisfied with porcelain skin, flaming red hair, and a smattering of freckles, she attempted to gain celebrity by becoming first Lindsay with an E, then Lindsay with a Z, before returning once again to Lindsay with an A. And all that just to avoid being mistaken for BFF Emily. Amelia, better known as Emily, boasted cerulean blue eyes and golden blonde hair the length of which was uncertain due to the fact that it rarely, if ever, had been glimpsed unadorned by any number of tightly secured, scrunchy types contraptions. It was one of the great mysteries of life, not how Amelia came to be called Emily. Clearly, it wasn't anything close to resembling a nickname. Nevertheless, Lindsay and Emily had been dubbed twins, inseparable since the third grade. Those two were, at times, as different as they were alike. Add to that mix, one girl, the color of cafe au lait, and one with silky <laughs> black hair and almond-shaped eyes, and you think they all came, prefabricated, straight from central casting. We're talking about the next hit reality TV show, or all-go rock band, The Prefab Four. Even their names sounded like they were handpicked. To be perfectly fair, as in Emily's case, the two other girls' names didn't start out all cutesy and rhymy. Dee Dee went through a lengthy transition while both denying and embracing her ethnicity. Born Andrea, Dee Dee tried all avenues, starting with Andrea and Addy, Andy, <laughs> then on to Drea, Ray, and leading her finally to Dee Dee. Kimberly, as a young child, refused to answer to anything but Kim. Kim Lee was what her family calls her, and since she didn't much care for her actual name, Kimberly Lee, Kim eventually found her identity as Kimberly. In these days of fast food and faster technology, they should have just stuck with Linz, M, D, and Kim. Believe it or not, those girls weren't always a part of the same clique. There were times when Emily and Lindsay would be caught dead with the likes of Kimberly and Dee Dee. So much of the whole school experience was about what you wore and with whom you sat with at lunch. Emily was, typically, the cheerleader type, while Kimberly was rather bookish. Lindsay was invited to all the best parties, and Dee Dee kept mostly to herself. Of course, that was before the incident that changed everything. <laughs> Everyone knew you had to conform to fit in at high school, or else you weren't part of the in crowd. L Emily and Lindsay were by no means the smartest grapes in the bunch, but they were popular, and when you're a teen, that's pretty much that all that mattered. Kimberly was smart enough to know that her strengths were in academics, but oddly, she was completely unaware of how naturally beautiful she was. Dee Dee, for all her aloofness, ended up being the one who, ultimately, brought the four girls together. Yay me! <laughs> it happened on a Friday, no special one, just a typical day before the weekend, TGIF. Lindsay and Emily were rifling through a weekly magazine, hardly one containing world news, pointing at a page featuring the latest in celebrity handbags. Kimberly just happened to be passing by at that very moment with her nose in a book. Yes, the kind with actual words, and in this case, patterns. It might have been a slow motion scene right out of the movies as Dee Dee came rushing by, at the same time balancing a rainbow assortment of yarn in her obviously overloaded arms. Next thing they knew, it was like mixing chocolate and peanut butter, only without the calories, or the chocolate, or the peanut butter. <laughs> Better in fact, because it brought together two distinct tastes, the insightful, also known as the shoppers, and the skilled, aka the crafters. That one act of disastrous timing in a most unlikely setting would be the backdrop for a profitable and long-lasting friendship.